honorable members of the U.S. Senate, distinguished personalities, I salute you all. This gathering today about the issue of Iran has a critical message which the world needs more than ever before. The message is to focus on the root cause of the war and crisis in the Middle East, which is the Iranian regime. The message is do not overlook the primary source of warmongering in the region. Last year, in these days, there was a massive uprising in Iran where the Iranian people demonstrated their opposition to all forms of dictatorship by chants of no to Shah, no to the Mullahs. During these protests, the Mullahs killed 750 youths. They arrested and tortured uh, 30,000 people. In the 2019 uprising, they killed 1,500 people. Please uh, think about these figures. What is now happening in Iran is a big war between the people of Iran and the ruling regime. The continuation of that war is what you see in the Middle East. The Mullahs need to provoke wars in the region to prevent their overthrow. Khamenei has repeatedly said that if we do not fight in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Gaza, we must fight in the cities of Iran. Imagine this brutal religious tyranny was not in power in Iran. Iraq would be different. Syria and Yemen would not have been uh, torn by war. Lebanon would not suffer for so long, and there would not be so many obstacles to peace in the Middle East. Honorable senators, now let us review some of the regime's terrorist attacks abroad. The explosion of the U.S. Marines uh, barracks in Beirut, the explosion of the uh, Khobar Towers in Saudi Arabia, and the killing of at least 600 American soldiers in Iraq, and so on. But today, the Mullahs have made the Middle East engulfed in fire and blood, and Khamenei said uh, he's proud of it. And his Minister of Intelligence said, this is the greatest of all victories. Here are the most significant conclusions of the past experiences. Appeasement of the Mullah's regime is disastrous. Years ago, the world uh, realized that this regime could not be reformed, nor would it change its behavior. The world must now admit that the Iranian regime cannot be appeased either. Every concession given to the regime will fuel more wars. Another conclusion is that no solution in the Middle East will succeed unless the head of the snake in Tehran is targeted. This can be only done by siding with the struggle of the Iranian people and their organized resistance to overthrow the regime. Regime change in Iran is the only right policy on the international level, a policy that is essential for peace and tranquility in the region and the world. Regime change in Iran is a practical policy which will be realized by the Iranian people and resistance. One should also learn from past mistakes. In December 2003, I said that the danger of the regime's influence in Iraq was a hundred times greater than the nuclear risk. We have repeatedly declared that the Iranian regime should not be allowed to use Iraq to spread its influence in the region. But unfortunately, instead of blocking the Iranian regime in Iraq, they left the gates open for it. Without the influence in Iraq, the regime would have never been able to spread war and slaughter 
throughout the region and extend its arms to the uh, Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. These mistakes created a disaster that continues to this day. Accepting the regime's demand for blacklisting the MEK and the NCRI, putting pressure on the MEK in various countries, including Albania, is among the consequences of those catastrophic mistakes. The various restrictions imposed on the MEK in Ashraf Tiri in Albania must be ended. As the US House resolution uh, seeks uh, 27 points out the rights of the MEK must be recognized according to the Geneva Refugee Convention, the European Convention on Human Rights, and the international law. But now it is necessary to take three steps vis-à-vis -vis the Malas regime. First, the policy of easing sanctions against the regime must be stopped. This policy has given the regime about $100 billion in the last three years. Instead, the snapback mechanism should be activated and six UN Security Council resolutions against the Iranian regime's nuclear program must be uh, restored. The bipartisan objection of members of the US House and Senate to the Iranian regime uh, having access to $6 billion is a step in the right direction. Any money or resources provided uh, to the Iranian regime uh, will be used for terrorism outside of Iran and repression inside Iran. Under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter, the regime should also be declared an urgent threat to international peace and security. Second, the United States and the European Union should recognize the struggle of the Iranian people to overthrow the regime. The US Senate and the House of Representatives should pass laws to make this as the official policy of the United States. Third, US Congress should endorse the legitimacy of the struggle of rebellious use against the terrorist IRGC. I have no doubt that your firmness against this vicious regime will send a strong message to Tehran. The Iranian people and their freedom fighters will never forget those who stood with them in difficult times. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you. We heard the eloquent remarks.